Yo, 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 we are live and direct here at TWS. My name's Colin Whippy D. Uh, we are going to try and entertain you for the next hour. Uh, basically, a little bit about my history. Um, I've been windsurfing for over 30 years now. Um, been traveling the world for 20 years, been going to some epic locations. Um, been competing and been coaching most of it. Worked for some amazing companies. So I'm going to, uh, for you guys that don't know me, I'm going to give you a little bit of my uh, top tips of uh, sort of the common stuff that people ask me through the clinics and a few top tips to really help you guys at home for, for your windsurfing. Um, so we start off, I'm not going to rig a sail because I think there's been quite a lot of rigging chats out there. Um, I'm just going to give you a few tips to be careful on. Let me just grab something quickly. Okay, so we all know what one of these are. It's a sail bag. Okay, on the sail bag we have a few things that come up to play. We have the size of the sail, Bonsai 53. We have the size of the mast, 400 meter mast. And then it says 425, so that's 400 meter mast with 25 centimeter extension. And then the boom 165. Now, just let me show you why this doesn't really make sense, okay? Um, yes, it does make sense if I have a Goya mast, a Goya extension and a Goya boom, and I'm lucky enough to have that. But some people don't have that. Some people use, you know, like a, um, I don't know, some sort of random extension. It may not be a Goy extension or if it's an Ezzy or whatever it is. Okay, I just want to show you the difference of measurements of how different companies kind of measure a little bit different. So we've got here a few extensions. Um, I've lost my screwdriver. Where do I put my screwdriver? Okay, so we've got a B3 extension. This is a, a Spanish, um, it's from Tarif, I think, B3. And then we've got the classic Goya extension here. Let me just grab a screwdriver. Okay, just to show you what numbers are. So, whoa, let me take this off. Okay, so 15 centimeters is there. Screwdriver that maybe fits the hole. Every hole's a gun. I found the original. Happy days. So 15. Okay, let me pop that through there. And then if we put that to the bottom, to this one, we show it comes up to just over to 12 actually. So there we go, just to show that different extensions have dif different measurements. So if you guys have say have a Goya sail, you're lucky enough, okay, and you rigged your sail to 14 centimeters, what it said on the tin, okay, but then you use a different extension, you can see the difference. Okay, so that's like four centimeters out. So be very, very careful with your measurements, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, um, another thing, and this is a classic thing that people make mistake, is harness lines. Okay, so here we've got some 28s. Okay, three different brands, Mystic, North and MFC. And we can see they're all different sizes. Okay, I'd say the MFC are probably about 28. Okay, and they measure, I think, from the top here, and you can see the 28 Mystic ones are a lot bigger, okay? And then we have the North ones that are about the same size. Okay, so that's just another thing. Let's have a look at the 32 inches. We have MFC again that I use, and we have Severn. And as you can see, the Severns are a little bit shorter. Okay, so very important. So never buy a set of harness lines online if you've never used them before. So I'd always recommend going into the shop and checking out the harness lines and make sure they're the right size. I know Neil Pride are probably four centimeters bigger than everybody else because they measure from, let me grab my harness line. So some companies measure from the bottom, some measure from there and some measure from the top. So look, no, no one's right or wrong, they're just different measurements. So you've got to be very careful with this if you're buying lines online. Um, also recommend the solid stiff ones like they do for MSC. They don't move like for me I don't like really this too much when I'm sailing. Okay with a floppy line you get this or if you ever hook in while jiving or jumping It's pretty annoying so always go to fix one Okay, so that's a little bit about measurements um, Another thing that you guys will probably because we've all been at home. We haven't windsurfed for a while Another thing that we've got to be really careful with is your UJ your universal joint now, these have a lot of pressure. When they're in the board and connected to the sail, they're pretty much like that all the time in the sun. Um, they go brittle, they crack, they break. Um, I'd recommend keeping an eye on that. If you, now, if you have any tiny little bits of cracks in them or anything like that, get rid of it. 
Okay, you don't have to get rid of the whole mast foot, you can just replace the tendon. Now, if you ever buy one of these, it's worth getting a good one. They are worth a lot of money, but they keep your sail connected to your board. Now, if you ever do go in a shop and you buy one of these, make sure you get a spare tendon, so you've always got that spare bit. Now, truthfully, I always change mine. I use my kit a lot, so I probably use my kit in a year, what you guys do in a lifetime. Um, and my kit's always constantly on the beach in the sun, so this thing goes perish quite quick. So I always keep an eye on this, okay? So if there's any cracks or anything like that, don't trust it, get rid of it. Don't look at it and go, oh, she'll be all right for one more sail, because it won't. That's when you're gonna get the Coast Guard out. Now, if you're a late sailor, it's all right, because you're just gonna drift to the other side, but it's still annoying, okay? Now, these bits of ropes are a lifeline. If that does break, it just keeps your sail connected to your board. So highly recommend keeping an eye on this. Now, also one of these things that a lot of people don't have, Okay, it's called a volcano, or anything like that. Um, I think they're called volcanoes. Basically, it just protects your feet from the mast foot. Now, if you're wondering, wondering why that you never hit the mast foot, that's probably why you're not making your tacks. Now, when I tack, I'm literally hugging this mast foot that we're going to explain a bit later. Okay, so I'd recommend one of them. They're probably about 10 euros or 10 pounds. They're nothing, they're well worth it, or 10 US dollars. Grab one, it will protect your feet. Okay. So, a little bit about measurements, so you can just see that every manufacturer does measure different, so you've got to be very careful on rigging your sail. Now, I'm not going to rig a sail, um, just because it will take a bit of time, and I'm sure you guys have done all that. So now, what we're going to talk about is a few, sort of, a few of the main moves. Should we talk about turning around? We'll talk about our tacking and jibing. Now, if you guys got any questions out there, please uh, put a comment in the box and I can answer it live and direct here. Um, but let's just break down windsurfing. Now how I explain it is, you've got to think of two halves. You have your top half of your body and your bottom half. Now at all times, your bottom half's doing something and your top half's normally doing the opposite. So if we look at the jibing, our bottom half's doing this, okay, and our top half's doing the opposite. So now, even if we think about the shaka or shove it, if anybody knows what that is, if the bottom half goes there and the top half stays on the sail, forward loop, we jump, Top half stays there, the bottom half goes around that way. So we can work out this system, now that's half of windsurfing. So we're going to talk about the jibe and attack. Now, the jibe and attack, there's two movements. Once you've learned that, you won't ever have to learn it again. Now, a lot of people come up to me and say, oh yeah, I'm really struggling with my tacking or my jibing. Okay, and then I ask them, I say, right, t show me what you do with your tack. And they go, well, don't know, I just, you know, try and do it out there. Exactly, if you can't do it on the land, you've got no chance of doing it out there when it's rough and you've got the, the sail to deal with and stuff like that. So I'm going to give you a little bit of homework to practice at home and once you master all of this, okay, you can practice it in the mirror, you can do it in your kitchen, you can do it in the bathroom. Once you master all of this, you've got your jiving down to a T and your tacking. Then there's a few more other step movements, the heli tack and now the foil jive and that's pretty much the only four movements you'll ever need. So I'm going to explain the first two. Just my bottom half and what goes on with the feet. So I'm going to grab my lovely board here, slide it over. Okay, so hopefully you can see my board. Take my shoes off. Okay, you don't have to use a board. I'm going to show you how not to use a board in a minute, but I'm just going to use a board because I've got lots of them, so I might as well take advantage. Um, first things first, foot strap size. Okay, if we can see my feet here, this is on the minimum. Now, if I lift up with all my toes, my foot nearly slips out. Now, this is very, very important why we need big foot straps. If we have tiny foot straps, we're kind of sailing on our tiptoes. Now, if you ever windsurfed in a pair of high heels, it's pretty hard, I wouldn't recommend it. Okay, so first things first, I need to sort my foot straps out. So, people freak out about big foot straps. Um, people freak out about them getting stuck in big foot straps. It's actually the opposite. If your foot strap's really small, and you have to ram your foot in, you're gonna to struggle to get it out. Now, if you look now, my foot goes in with ease, okay? Look where my foot is, it's right along the center line. Now, if I lift up, all that power is going through the balls of my feet and not just my tiptoes. Now, this is the key to wave sailing, to doing a decent jive. So many people sail with too small of foot straps. It says it in the name, they're foot straps, they're not toe straps. Okay, so please make sure you've got nice big feet. Now look, realistically, you can see my foot moving there. 
that's pretty good because if I do end up in a situation where I'm upside down, I don't want my foot to get stuck. I want to be able to move it from left to right. Should be able to go in easy, come out easy. So foot straps, make sure they're nice and big. I'm going to adjust this back one. Okay. Right, so hopefully, yep, nice. So you can see there my back foot straps over the centre line. So if I'm jumping, I can full control. If I need to release, I can let go. Very, very important. Again, also I can move my foot. If I do end up in that awkward situation, I can move my foot in the foot strap. Now, sailing up wind and stuff, people really struggle when the wind's light. They go, oh yeah, it's great with your big foot straps when I'm jiving, but how can I get up wind? Now look, I can still use my massive foot strap like a toe strap, no problem. Actually going up wind, what I do is bring my front foot, my heel forward, I lift up my toes like so, and my back foot comes right out of the foot strap and I pop my heel in the direction that I want to go. And what that does is allow my body weight and the sail to come forward, keep the board nice and flat. Okay, so we've got big foot straps. Let's have a look at the foot movement for the jive. Okay, so now once you master this, Hopefully, you shouldn't have to think about it again. And the key is to keep doing it and doing it and doing it until you don't have to think about it. That is the secret. Now, if I'm sailing, okay, and I'm sailing like this, this is the footwork that goes on my jive. My back foot will come out of the strap and it will go pretty much opposite. If I draw a line from this toe to that toe, it's a bit like skiing, both my legs are parallel and I'm driving into the turn. Now some people do like this and it's all right if you're John Wayne, okay, and you've got bowed legs, but I find that a little bit awkward. When I did my DVDs with Bartek or the, the movies, we found actually that every time I jive, my feet are parallel like this, just like skiing, so you can absorb the chop, okay, and that's where we want our back foot. Now nice and wide. The wider you are, the more stable you are. Okay, so here comes the magic. Now look, my front foot twists. Okay, so if anybody's ever done one of those jibes and your front foot gets stuck in the uh, foot strap, it basically means that you're not bringing your weight to your back foot. So if I lean forward and try and move my front foot, it's pretty much impossible. If I lean towards my back foot, I can do what I call the Elvis wiggle. You ain't nothing but a hound Okay, get the Elvis wiggle, and then I can slide and glide it across heel to toe. Now from there, this is an awkward position, so you don't want to stay in this position for too long. Now from here, if I bend my knees like this, it's a lot easier. Now if I stand upright, it's quite hard to actually do this position here. If I bend my knees and then step forward, it's a lot easier. Now every time I think about jiving, and when I teach jiving, think about stepping down steps. Okay, so my back foot comes out the foot strap and it comes down. Okay, when I do my foot change, I step and always keep my weight and body weight low to control that power. Now, the most common mistake with people they're driving is they're flying along, back foot comes out, they're stepping up, okay, wobbling, whoop, whoop, and then they step forward. Now, if you think about stepping down, it's a lot easier. From there, we step down, down, and there. Now, where do I put my front foot? Always just behind the mast foot because hopefully I'm going to have a little bit of power to control that power and towards the centre line. So I can push that board off downwind and then straight into the front strap. Okay, so again, foot movement for the jive is all you're going to need to learn. Is you can get yourself a board, I'm going to show you in a minute what we can do on land. Okay, without a board, we're going to bend, bend our knees, lean our weight to our back foot, heel to toe, and then step like so. Okay, you can practice the other way. There, easy. Now if you train that every five to 10 minutes before you go to bed, if you clean your teeth in the classroom or anything like that, once you come on one of my clinics or the next time you go to jive, hopefully you won't have to worry about that and we can worry about the top half. Cool, right, let me show you how we can make a simulator at home without a board. All you need is a bit of sticky tape, okay, um, some sort of, you could use a cup of tea, a can of beer, uh, 
a bottle of Corona, that's a bit awkward. Okay, anything like that and give yourself a mast foot. Now if you can have a look, I have a centre line. The centre line is really important in windsurfing. Okay, realistically my front foot strap will be about a foot away. And what I'm going to do is draw myself or sticky myself some foot straps like so. There we go. And there we go, I've got myself a board. You don't have to do this with tape as long as you keep an eye on for the centre line. Now I'd recommend the first time you do it is either have some tape Okay, or you can even use a pair of shoes, like that, or a pair of flip-flops, you know. If you don't have the tape, you can have this, and then you could go like so. But I've got the tape, not very sticky, must be from the Chinese shop. Okay, so from here, my feet are in the foot straps. Okay, and then from here, I go across, heel to toe, and then step forward. So I don't need a board, and I'm doing it in my kitchen. So again, from here, come across like skiing, heel to toe and then step forward. Cool. So there's my virtual board, should we say, in my kitchen. So next time you're cooking some food up, grab your board if you're doing the frying pan. There. Okay, you're all over it. Now we're gonna go through the tack in a minute. Okay, um, actually we might as well carry on with the tack now. So, the jibe. That's all you have to practice at home. Again, just once again, back foot comes out. This is just your footwork. Heel to toe to step. Okay, remember to step down, look at my knees. They go from there, I bend down and keep nice and low. Now with windsurfing it's always better to fall onto your back than to fall onto your face. Now if you fall onto your face it normally puts you in a weird, awkward position that you need to water start out from. If you fall onto your back, normally you have yourself flying and then boom, you can fly off um, and away you go. So always try and think about falling down into the water. Cool. Now let's have a look at the tacking side of things. We have got questions. I see we have questions. I will come back to them in a second. Okay, so tacking. Now most people when they tack, they bring their feet up and they put their front foot there. Okay. Now the only problem when I tack, if I do that, I normally naturally want to step away from the center line. Now one top tip for the tack is when you put that front foot up, try and wrap it all the way round. So naturally as I step forward, I can naturally step back towards the center line. Now, ballerina, not bricklayer. We're not stomping around like this. We're trying to be nice and light on our feet, okay? Now with the tack and the jive, we're trying to be ballerinas. Um, if we have a look at the tack again, my back foot comes out of the foot strap, so my heels are touching together. Okay, my front foot comes up and around. And now here comes the magic. As I step up, I pivot on this toe and step round and back. Again, from there to there, I step up, wrap it around. From there, boom, easy. Now again, that's the only foot movement you ever need to know to learn to tack. So you can practice this at home, you can practice it anywhere. What I wouldn't recommend is practicing it on the water if you don't know what's going on. To do this, a bit of muscle memory before you go sailing, and then you'll never have to think about it again. So foot, I'm gonna do myself out of a job here, but your footwork's really easy. That's your footwork. Jive in there, heel to toe and step, okay? Of course, I do it quite fast, but that's a, a 25 years of jiving. Okay, slowly do it there, there, and there. Now, people really struggle on waveboards when they come to me and they, they get on waveboards, there's a few things they struggle with, pushing on the back of the board a lot, okay, and we, we encourage them to sell more on the front foot, and that's one thing we do through the clinic. Um, and where else do they go wrong? They, um, oh, excuse me, sort my tape out. Okay, um, and basically on a small board, everything we do should be the same as a big board, we just do it a lot quicker. So if we think about tucking a big board, so we go up, like this, we can step, and then go round. Now if I do that on my, you know, 69 litre weight board, I'm gonna sink, so I gotta be a lot quicker. So from here, it's the same movement, you're just a lot quicker. So from now, I'm like, round, like a ninja, ninja quick. 
Now, if we look at jiving on a big, big board, and we're, we're, you know, a big free ride board, my back foot comes out, I'm jiving, and normally my foot movement's about that speed. Now, if I do it on my 69 litre weight board, it's the same movement, just a lot faster. So from there, I'm like a ninja. Okay, once again, from there, like a ninja. Okay, that's why I want you guys to practice at home. And then we'll talk about the tack and the jibe for sort of what happens with the sail, maybe on a later date if this works out well. Okay, so we have a question um, from Vika, Vic, Vilka. Um, what's the best sail, size sail to line a forward loop? Uh, that is a very good question. And that all depends on you. Um, you've got to be comfortable. Like for me, my most comfortable setup is a 5.0 and my 89 litre quad. Um, for me personally, that's the sail I just feel naturally on. You know, like everything feels comfy, the boom's not too big. Even when I get on a 5.3, it seems a little bit bigger. Um, I do get spoiled. I uh, do live in very windy, nice places. So I am very lucky for that side of things. Um, but the most important thing is something that you're, you, you're, you're comfortable with. You know, like if we go to Pozo, the average size sail for the ladies there are, you know, 2.7 and 3.0. So they're going to feel comfy on that. Then if we take it up to Lanzarote, for example, the sails are a bit bigger because the wind's a lot less. The people there are probably going to be comfy on 5.3s, 5.7s. So it all depends on yourself. And the most important thing is you're comfortable. Okay, comfort is everything with tuning. You know, if you're comfy with your kit, you're not fighting it, and you're going to feel comfy to then pull off your first forward loop or something like that. So if there's any more questions at home, please uh, fire them over. Uh, we do have another one. Somewhere, here it comes. From Chris Wright, any tips on, I we'll just have a few technical issues. Any tips on early planing? Um, yes, lots. Okay, now the key to early planing is all in the head. And it's that, that Monday, Friday feeling. Like at the moment we're all at home every day. But you know, if we go back two months and it comes to Monday morning, we're like, oh, really? We've got to go to work again. And you're walking around, you're being really heavy, and you're being heavy as possible. Now, Friday comes, you're like, woo, let's go, yeah, it's weekend. And you're being super light. Now, that's all in your head. Now, early planning, I, I get this question a lot with bigger people. Bigger people, as soon as they look at the water and they go, right, it's not windy enough. So already, before they've even gone into the water, they got put into their head that it's not windy enough. Now, lighter people do the same when it's windy. They're walking down a beach thinking, shit, the bed, it's windy. Okay, and they're actually already, before they go out in the water, they've got it in their head that they're too light. So it's all about mental sort of preparation. Now, Dave White, a legend of a guy from Essex, one of the fastest guys on a production board, he's big, okay, and he planes before anybody, like anybody, he flies around. Now, that's in his head because he thinks he's light, but he's actually massive. And uh, so you just gotta mentally think about it and be light. Now a few things we can do with the sail. Now pumping, like moving the sail all the time. Now on small wave boards, if you ever watch any professional windsurfers or any of the good guys, their sail's never just moving. Uh, sorry, their sail's always moving, it's never just still. Okay, it's always constantly moving. Now, if I move the sail, I'm actually naturally putting Master pressure on, giving myself downforce through the middle of the board. Now, by this, by moving the sail, now this is the same technique as we do when we do a beach start. When we do a beach start, we pull the sail in, we put it forward, and we get up, and then we release. Okay, same as the water start. When we water start, we pull the sail in, push it forward, sniff under the armpit, get up. Once we're up, then we release the power. Now that technique that you're doing to water start and beach start is the same as pumping. Now, it's not a muscle thing. I could do it with two fingers, it's a technique thing. And basically the sail comes in and you drive all that power towards you and then you push it forward and then release. Now all that pressure will go through the mast foot, through the middle of the board and get you playing in nice and early. Also, top tips, it's feet position. Now, my foot is only fully in the foot strap like that if I'm fully powered up. Now, in lighter winds, I'd actually bring my foot out a little bit, so it's like a toe strap, 
Also, you can see my heel comes forward. What that naturally does is bring my weight forward and the sail weight forward. And that drives all the weight through the middle of the board. And that's also how we can help early plane and ability. Now, the back foot. If you're underpowered and it's not too wild, I'd recommend taking your back foot out. Okay, that just takes pressure away from the tail and again encourages you to come forward and bring the sail forward too. So hopefully there's a few tips, but the main thing is to work out the pumping and again it's the same technique as you've been doing for years when you beach start and water start. Once you get that technique, always constantly moving the sail. Now the only way I can sail that board is if I just stand there and sit there, it will sink. I've always got to be constantly moving the sail. Okay, same with water start. Again, if you learn into water start and you just sit there like this, you're going to need about 10 more knots of wind. Okay, if you just work the sail a little bit more, you'll get up much easier. Cool, we have another question. Recently I had the problem of stretching my ankle too much to keep the pressure on the free ride board. So I would make, solve by making smaller foot straps. Should I keep big foot straps but move it more outboard? Yes, you answered your question there. Now, it depends on what sort of free ride board it is. Now, look, foot straps this big, okay? It's good for a wave board, definitely a freestyle board, and pretty much most sailing. Now, if you ever get into the free ride boards and the slalom board, you will make them a bit smaller. Now, there's still a limit, okay? Not that you can see my little toe, but my little toe's about there. Now, you can still see there, the most important thing on a free ride board is when I jive, I'm still going through the balls of my feet. Okay, um, so really important that you still have fairly big foot straps, but not as big as you would on your wave board or your freestyle board. Now, if you're at that level where you're finding that you are breaking your ankles because your board's trying to rail up, now free, boards, free ride board or a slider board is meant to rail up, and that's why we have outboard foot straps to keep that rail down. So by maybe moving your foot straps outboard, if you're sailing really powered up, that's gonna help stop your ankles for sure. Um, definitely if you find that the board's railing and you're trying to keep it down, that's how you're breaking your ankle. So yeah, maybe a little bit smaller, but still not tiny, okay? Really important, like the, the difference of my, my slider board to my weight board, it's probably about that much. And now, I'm not sure how big that is where you come from, but a couple of inches from where I come from, about that much makes a difference. So yeah, to answer that question, also you'll see here that this board has options of two different straps. You have, um, you have your inboard straps and then your outboard, or inboard to outboard. Now this board tells me it's a freestyle wave, so it's meant to do sort of everything that a wave board does. Okay, but if you take it to your lake or, or if you do sail powered up, you can then move it a little bit more outboard. You've got the option of putting double, double back foot straps on the back of this. Now you won't see that option on a waveboard, as you can see here. Okay, we've only got one option and that's inboard and the single back foot strap. Now that is because this board is designed to just go in the wave, so it's only designed for you to go inboard and that's the way they design this board for you guys to sail. Now this board's a little bit different, it's a freestyle wave. It turns amazing on a wave, but also will, you know, you can have a race with your, your, your best mate Dave on the lake. The only thing I'd do different if I was racing Dave would be moving my foot straps outboard. Okay, and that's, that's, that's a good option about these boards. And then you get the same as slalom boards to, to free move boards. Free move boards have outboard foot straps or slightly inboard from there. We have another question. Uh, how do I get my head around launching off a wave and being able to land it? <laughs> good question. Now, we are very, 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 very lucky in our sport. We can jump around all day long and we land in water. Now you've got to think about this. Would you jump in a swimming pool? Probably yes. Have you jumped in a swimming pool? Probably yes. Did it hurt? Hopefully no. Okay, that's how you've got to think about it. We're not learning to jump on a mountain bike or a motorbike. Okay, if you've ever done that, I've done a lot of that. And when you land, if you do get it wrong, you end up with cuts everywhere. Okay, we are very, very lucky that our sport allows us to go into that beautiful ocean out there. Okay, and when we do jump and we do wipe out, it's not too bad. Now the top tip that I can give you for any sort of jumping, if you're jumping really high and it all goes wrong, or if you're going to a forward and you're gonna over rotate, or even a back loop and it goes wrong, just let go of your back hand. 
Now don't let go of the whole sail, because what will happen is the sail will power up, it will go downwind. And normally your weight, sorry Harko, your weight, okay, you're upwind. So what will happen is the sail will go downwind, you'll go upwind, and you'll feel this really awkward position on your feet. Now, what you want to try and get in the habit to do is just let go of the power. So if you jump and you go round and fall and you're coming around and it's like, whoa, I'm still up. If you just let go of that hand, it will release all the power out of the sail and you'll just fall into the water start position. Jump in. First time you jump in, do it unhooked. Okay? Don't be hooked in. Definitely if you've got short lines, I wouldn't ever recommend that. But if you've got even longer lines, if you jump hooked in, it all goes wrong. Okay, what can you do? You can't ugh, let go. So you need to be able to unhook, okay, so if it all does go wrong, you can just let go of your back hand. Now, the top tip for whatever you do in the air, even if it goes wrong with a jibe or any time it goes wrong with windsurfing, just let go of your back hand. Like you jump, you go, whoa, it's going wrong, let go of your back hand. You may do like an air vulcan, but you'll land in the water start position, nice, safe and sound. Okay, so release that back hand and then you'll be all good. Now, there is an eject button. And you've got to think about this like uh, I always explain, a bit like a fighter pilot that's worth millions. Okay, you only ever eject that once in a lifetime. Okay, you fly, you, you fly a jet and it's like eject, eject, eject. Now with windsurfing we're allowed to do that once or twice a year. Now the only problem, if I jump and completely let go of my kit, where's it gonna go? It's gonna fly downwind. Poor old Joe Bloggs, his water start and then suddenly gets a load of kit on his head. It's not ideal. So what you want to do is try not to use that eject button every time you jump and get scared. Okay, remember it's only water, it's going to be a slap on the back. If you jump, it all goes wrong. Ooh, let go of your back hand and then you'll all be good. <coughs> Julian's given us a question. Uh, the best stance for playing an upwind in marginal wind conditions. Okay, so going back to uh, light wind conditions again. It's all about your foot position. Now, I don't know if you can see my feet. Can you see my feet? Hopefully you can now. Now this is going to be my front foot. Okay, everybody can try this at home. You can tap your left foot or if it's your right foot, make sure they're still alive. Okay, I'm going to lift up my big toe, like so. Okay, I'm going to roll to the outside of my foot. Now from here I'm going to bend my knee. Okay, if you put your back foot where normal back foot position of the foot strap will be and see if you can just lift up with your back leg. Okay, you can see I'm nearly falling forward. Now, if I do that into the foot strap, I lift up my big toe and roll onto the outside of my foot, I get stuck by the foot strap, but all that weight is now going to go through the rail of the board. Okay, like so. Now my back foot, again, here, I'm going to be pushing against the fin. The whole idea is to try and get your weight onto the rail and forward and use the volume of the board. So my back foot, I'm going to bring it out of the foot strap. You can see my heel, it's actually pointing towards the nose of the board. I'm still in the foot straps just in case it goes Ooh, wild. Okay, and then from here, that will just encourage my body weight, see if I can do it without a sail, to come forward. Now you can see all my weight's going through the middle of the board where all the volume is. Okay, what's that gonna do in my sail? That's gonna bring it forward even more. So that means it's gonna catch more wind and I'm gonna get going nice and early. Okay, so that's my top tips for uh, getting going, playing in upwind stance in really light conditions. So remember, bring that front foot up, okay? And also your back foot in the direction that you wanna go. Now if we quickly look at what goes on with the boom, um, let me just grab my, my amazing boom here. Okay, first things first. Okay, let's talk about the hands. Now everybody at home, this is one of my top tips, everybody grab their arm, okay, like so. So everybody at home, get your arm out, grab it like so, and give it a bit of pressure. You can see the muscles there, and all I want you to do is just lift up your big thumb and put it on top, and see what happens. Hopefully, at home, you'll feel the whole arm relax a little bit. So it's from there to there. Now, the problem when people windsurf is they're holding on to the boom like life or death. You've got to think about driving a car or even riding a bike. We don't grab the steering wheel like this, going, right, we're gonna go around the corner, like this, we're relaxed. Now the key is to relax with windsurfing. We get those thumbs at the top. It will help us naturally relax for our arms. Also encourage me to slide and glide my hands up and down the boom. Okay, here's always quite hard. Now, the only time that I do hold on like this is if I'm doing a forward loop or really wanna hold on as fast as I can, as much as I can, so a loop or a back loop. But normally when I'm sailing and wave sailing, constantly put my thumbs at the top. 
Now if we go sailing upwind, a lot of people sail too wide. If we bring our stance together, it will allow us to get out more, also keep the sail upright and give us more power. So top tip, get that front hand back so you can get that sail forward. Okay, and bring that back hand up a little bit and that will encourage you to go upwind. Interesting fact, your head weighs about five to seven kilos. Okay, so imagine what that is. So one bag of sugar is one kilo. Okay, seven of them up here. Well, probably with me about five. Okay, but most people average about five to seven kilos on their head. Okay, so you can imagine that's quite a lot of weight. Now, with windsurfing, always starts with your head, like anything in life. If I want to turn around, I can't just look at you and turn around, I have to turn my head. Now, we spend our whole life with windsurfing telling people, think about the head, keeping it simple. Now, sailing upwind, if I sail towards you, if I look there, I'm going to go there. But if I look upwind, look what happens to my whole body. Okay, it brings all my weight outboard, that's going to go onto the rail, and that's going to help me get upwind. Now, it's really important that you don't turn your whole body, just your head. Look what happens if I turn my whole body. There, the sail actually sheets out. Now I'm going tighter to the wind, I want to do the opposite, I actually want to keep the sail sheeted in. If not, I want to oversheet the sail. So how I do that is extend my front arm, so I'm pushing my front arm, but also put my head outboard. Now, we used to, I used to give myself love bites when we used to race, like this, all the time, because I'm looking upwind, and also I'm looking for the waves or whatever, I'm looking for the gusts. So always make sure your vision, that's a key point too. Cool. Windy days, so I have a quick question. Uh, how do you be the fastest around a slalom track? <laughs> That's a good one for the uh, TWS slalom boys. Um, three things I'd say with slalom. Number one is to be in tune with your equipment. Um, I don't do much slalom sailing. Um, I used to back in the day when it was a bit more easier, but I've seen the guys training here, and it is the difference between one fin to the other, like one fin of your favorite board can make so much difference. So being in tune with your equipment. Um, also, really good tip is a good start. Now, you know, I'm, I'm not gonna break down a good start, but like what I used to do when I was racing, basically I had three minutes from the start line. So I'd set my watch, three minutes to go, I'd leave the start line. I'd sail for about a minute and 20 seconds, okay, and then I'd drive. Hopefully knowing my jive would take about 10 seconds, keep an eye on my watch, then I'd start flying at the same speed back towards the start line, and hopefully hit the start line dead on. Now, start and racing, um, get yourself on a PlayStation, uh, on a car track. Okay, I learned a lot of my, my stylum through racing a go-kart. Um, it's the same, you go wide, go tight, and then wide again. Now, with the stylum jive, you've got to look at a few different things. You've got to look at the traffic, you got to look at the conditions, like if, if there's a gust, and what you want to try and do is go wide and be tight onto the boy mark so you've got the cleanest wind, then you can also bear down on everybody. That's always the ideal situation. If you last and you're coming in and there's carnage, you've got to look for that route out, and it's a bit like driving through traffic. You kind of, kind of spot your route and just hopefully no one's going to get in the way and then go from there. They're pretty much my top tips of slalom. Um, one thing I would say again, just going back, is the tune inside of things makes so much difference, it's unbelievable. You've got to be comfy on your equipment. Cool, Brian Miller, Miller time. I've been trying to do shove it for years, little success, any tips? Yes, I've got a really good tip for the shove it. Um, but going back to what we were talking about earlier, okay, but anybody doesn't know what a shove it is, it's a really good one to learn for, if you ever go on a wave and you do a backside hip, that's a shove it. Um, if you ever do a push loop, you go up, you do your push loop, this bit here is a shove it. So it's actually a really good sort of ground move to have if you want to then progress up to the other moves. Now, the key to the shove it, most common mistake when people go for shove it is they lay the sail down and they stand upright like this. And the sail's up there and they go, oh, is that about right, Brian, middle of time? That sounds probably about right for most people. Now, what we want to do with a shove it is again, separate our body to one, two, top half, bottom half. Now, our bottom half, let's just concentrate on that. I'm going to take my left foot, okay, and I'm going to try and just side kick it like that. That's all I'm going to do with my left foot. Just bring it to the side there. Can we do that? Brian, I'm hoping you're in your front room now practicing this. Okay, now if I think about that, okay, my shoulder leads, so my left leg, my left shoulder. As my left leg goes there, 
my left shoulder is going to do the opposite. There. Boom. Okay, and that's really like the key to separate from having the sail up there to get the sail low is you keep your, your top half with the sail, okay, and your bottom half's already going off. Now, do it off a wave or a bit of chop, hands quite close together. We overshoot the sail to get the board carving, and then as the board starts to take off, we leave that, that foot going that way, and then with our front arm, we push down. Here's our shove it position. Now, the reason why they call it shove it. So it's like shoveling, okay, to get myself back up under the board, all I'm going to do is push my back hand and bring the sail up in front, bang, boom, shove it. Okay, so hopefully that will help, so again, just for you Mr. Miller, bottom half, top half, just practice that, boom, boom, or the other way, shove it. Okay, next one, um, drive knob, me. Change first the feet or flip the sail? Hmm, good question. Um, that is a very good question, so I just want to get rid of my chewing gum. Now, it depends on the jibing, okay? The question is, should I jibe, flip the sail and go strap to strap, or should I do a foot change first? Now, if you're learning to jibe from day one, I'd always recommend learning the foot change first. Now, some old school sailors that have been sailing for over 20 years, they do their strap to strap. Now, the only problem with the strap to strap is you flip the sail. Can you see me, guys? Yeah, you flip the sail, you grab hold of the sail, then you change your feet. Now, the only problem with that is when I flip the sail, all my weight is at the back of the board. Let me just move this a little bit. Okay, so I'm flying along, I've got my jib, I flip my sail, and still my weight's at the back of the board. Now, unless I'm ninja quick with the sail, normally what happens, you grab hold of the sail, you do this, and the thing sinks and turns up into wind, and you end up doing a, a non-planing jib. Okay, so what I'd recommend if you're learning to jib, is definitely go, uh, not strap strap, step jib first. If you're already jibing for many years and you're getting stuck, Keep to the strap to strap because it may confuse you. Um, tips for the strap to strap is to be aggressive with the rig and also when you receive the rig, okay, this front arm, if you ever sail in switch stance, bend this front arm and kiss the gun. And if I do that, naturally you can see my body keeps low. If I stand tall and have a straight arm, I'm going to have no balance. So by bending that front arm, okay, and kissing that gun that's not very big at the moment because 20. Uh, six weeks of doing nothing, okay, that will keep you nice and stable. Um, so yeah, definitely recommend the uh, step jive. We have a video on the YouTube channel if you want to check it out later. Um, you know your footwork, and I'd recommend the step jive. Okay, Burns asks this question, what safety gear do you recommend to carry? Also, any tips of self-rescue, thank you. Um, bit of rope, you can never go wrong with a bit of rope. Um, you know, I actually came up with this idea of a bracelet that gave me two meters of rope, but I never actually put it in production. But yeah, a little bit of rope, you can do wonders with a bit of rope. You can uh, tie yourself back together if you're out hall breaks, you're in hall. Um, you can do your down hall. You can actually connect your mast foot to your sail just to get you home with a bit of rope. So, you know, back in my RYA days, they always recommend us to have a bit of rope on the harness or at the end of the boom or anything like that. So you can always go safety with a bit of rope. Um, other safety tips is never sail alone. I know it's quite hard to say at the moment because we're not allowed to go sailing. And if we are, we've got to sail alone at the moment. But always make sure you tell someone that you're going out. So if it's your son or, or, or your mum or whatever, just say, look, mum, going sailing down the coast, should be back about five or six. If you're not back, she can give you a phone and then there's always someone knows where you are. Um, and always just check your equipment. Now, I often change my ropes. Um, a really good one that no one ever checks is this rope here. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. Okay, and that's your in-haul rope. You see this? Now, no one ever checks that. That little bit of knob there, okay, that wears and tears all the time. People look at you and go, oh, yeah, she'll be all right, one more session. Again, that's when it's always going to break. So make sure your bits of rope are always intact. I again change all my rope. If you notice on my ropes, 
They're white, okay, and let me show you why. And I'd recommend anybody to do this at home. Like next time you go into your, your local windsurf store, they got two bits of rope. Or oh, the yellow one looks quite nice, okay. And it's three euros cheaper for a meter, brilliant. I'm gonna get the yellow one because it goes well on my sale. But actually, the white one's so much better. Okay, why? Because straight away you can see the tension difference and I'm not even doing that. Okay, this rope is a four core strand. It's four cores that combine together and it doesn't move. Now, the cheap and cheerful from the Chinese shop or from wherever you're gonna get your rope from, okay, you can see already it's, it's frayed and it's crap. Okay, it's a three core strand. So it's free core, so it has a little bit of movement. Okay, so what I'd recommend is always, and some manufacturers, they, you know, they put the cheap stuff in, okay? What I'd recommend is always get the four core stuff. It's gonna make a game changer for putting your downhill on. It'll just like, it's so much smoother and effortless. Okay, you would talk to any silent solar in the world and they'd always use this. Go to four core. Okay, next question from Yagov. Is that right? Did I pronounce that right? Yagov. Tried opening my foot straps the way you say, and now I feel a lot less control and less happy to throw in moves. Can you? Okay, right. So, big foot straps are going to feel weird at first. Okay. Um, most common people, uh, when jumping, people come out of their foot straps. Now, when you jump, no matter what jump you're doing, if it's just a normal jump, to a forward loop, to a back loop, to a push loop. Now always my front foot hyper extends like that and that makes the heel of my foot a lot higher. I never bring up my toes. People when they jump they do this. Okay, now where's all my weight at the moment? It's gonna be on the windward rail. I'm gonna screw up into wind. Now my front foot always does this. You can see I can pick that board up, okay, and I can release. Now my back foot does the same. I'm gonna crunch my back foot up. Now from here, if I crunch my toes, you can see I can pull the back of the board up like so. Okay, also I can release. It's gonna be strange at first, okay? But see the knees, they're meant for bending. Okay, a bit like drum and bass dancers. Like Okay, now all the time when I'm sailing, unless I'm on super flat water and it's lake sailing, I'm not like this. Okay, I'm all the time dancing to drum and bass. Okay, all the time bending my knees, and absorbing the chop. Now, if you ever see kite surfers sail strapless, those guys can jump. There's a reason they're gripping that board with their feet. Okay, so I think a lot to do with it in your head, and just try what I said when you're jumping. Push through your front foot, hyper extend that. That'll grip the, the, the front foot strap and your back foot strap. You pull up, like so, and then release. Okay, and if you ever want to try this, just try picking something up Okay, like that. That's how we pick the back of the board up. Okay, cool. So again, a lot of people do, you can go too big with foot straps. I'd recommend maybe for yourself, just going a little bit smaller at first, and then every day go bigger. Don't go from one extreme to another, because then it is gonna be really, really strange. Okay, so slowly bigger and bigger. And again, with the foot straps, the free ride boards and the slime boards, you're gonna make a little bit smaller, then your freestyle and your wave boards and your free wave boards. Okay, so minimum, you wanna see your little toe. Cool, perfect. Hopefully that answered your question. Step by step, young man, like small, small sizes each time. Next question, how do I practice a helicopter attack in land? Whoa. Um, it depends on the situation. Okay, let me give you my top tip with the heli tack. Now, most people, if I can do this without injuring myself, <laughs> okay, most people with a heli tack, they come forward, they do two things on a mistake. First things first, is they put their front foot too far forward. Now, remember the sail is going around the front. If my front foot's there, if anything does go wrong with the heli tack, okay, I'm gonna take my leg out. So, always alongside and never in front. Okay, and once we do the heli tack, once we do the heli tack, okay, this is the key thing what, what helps most people. Now, most people, when they flip the sail, the sail goes like that and powers up and they step forward. Okay, normally thrown forward. Now, this is the only time, apart from maybe the foil jive, 
that you ever step back past the original back foot. Now if we have a quick look at my feet, okay, and see what goes on here. Now this is the key to controlling the heli tack in strong winds. As I do my foot change, okay, think you're, you're, you're like Mr. Miyagi, Daniel Sun, Karate Kid. Keeping your arms straight, the sail's gonna go that way. Okay, as we move the sail, that's where I'm gonna twist my front leg. Now, ready for the magic. So as the sail comes across, I'm gonna step back past the original uh, back foot and then forward. Did you see that? Should we try that again? So, this is the key to strong wind heli tacking. As we threw the sail forward, keeping our arms straight, not across, keeping it way in front of us. Okay, my front foot comes all the way back woof, to control that power, and then I step forward. Classic mistake with a foot movement is people do this and they get pulled forward. What we always want to make sure is we step back to control that power. Um, also, top tip for the heli tack remember what you're doing. Like you're doing. 180 degree turn, you're going into wind and doing attack. Most people where they go wrong is they go flying forward, they push the sail forward and it flips too quick and you're still in that no-go zone. With the heli tack, if I'm coming towards you, again the eye of the wind's there, I drive, so I attack up into wind, I back wind the sail. I wait until my board is pointing on a new reach or even a new broad reach before I flip the sail. Now the bonus about that is when I do flip the sail a bit off the wind, it's got less power and it will actually pull me out of the turn. So, heli tacking short boards, wait until you've actually done more than 180 degrees and push it to 220. Okay, go that little bit past. And when you do flip the sail, step back, nice and wide, control that power. Hopefully that helps. Um, yeah, just foot movement really, you can practice unless you're in a garden with a bit of wind and then you need someone on the front to turn it for you. Cool. Um, any tip to avoid catapult in very onshore gusty conditions? A downhaul is a good tip. Having lots of, not lots of downhaul, but having the right amount of downhaul on your sail. Um, this is a thing that people, like we, we, we went through a phase and still now the freestyle sails, for example, the reason why they're so good at ducking and, and you know, and they have so much power is they have a very tight leech. Now, the only problem with the freestyle sail is when you sail it as a normal sailor in a straight line, it feels like it's pulling you all over the place, and that's why we need a little bit of downhaul. Um, so, make sure your sail's rigged, okay? Vision is everything, like look out for the gusts and the lulls. You can always pre-plan your trip, okay? You're sailing along and suddenly, you know, my mate Joe Bloggs catapults. I know, oh, it's gonna be a mega gust. I can bring the board up into wind, I can make myself heavy, okay? Now, this is a top tip, okay? For being heavy and the key to windsurfing. If we have a look at my awful body position here, I'm going to actually try and be normal here, okay, and then just I'm going to allow myself to slouch and how, uh, hunch, slouch and hunch, that's the word I'm looking for, okay, and all I'm going to do is just roll my stomach inboard and allow my head to come between my shoulders. Now, if you have a look what happens to my whole body position when I do that, it gets a lot lower, okay, now from there I can either go out or inboard, but I've got control of the sail because I'm nice and low and down. Remember what I said earlier, it's much better to fall onto your back than it is to get catapulted forward. Okay, so just vision of the gusts, keep an eye out on other sailors, and also if you're ever overpowered by bringing your board into wind and just being as heavy as possible, okay, is really the key. Now look, this heavy thing is, imagine Friday night and you're at a kebab shop, it's 2 a.m. and mates want to get you home and you're just sat there going, oh, don't want to move, can't be bothered. Like this, this is the heaviest you can be. But then if someone throws in, you know, we're gonna to go to the next club, you'll be like, woo, let's go. Okay, and that's the lightest you can be. Again, it's in the head. So when it's windy and gusty, the key is just be heavy. Okay, sink nice and low, don't stand too tall. Cool. Um, I can't pronounce that one, but Obstasala, 95. Obstasala, Obstasala, is that right? Sorry, bro, brother or sister. Uh, top tips for the first time going into the waves. Do I really need a wave board for that? Um, no, but you do need something with inboard foot straps and something a bit more easier than a sliding board. Remember the first time I ever went wave sailing, I was on my Explosion 288 and my 6.5 uh, full cambered sail and I went down the beach and everybody was rigging like 4.5s and 4.7s. I was like, what are they doing? Like, come on there, I'm man enough, I'm gonna take a 6.5. Went flying out on my slalom board, hit the first wave, didn't really hit it, just went straight through it. 
catapulted and then broke my sail to pieces. Um, trying to deal with the sarnum sail in waves was a lot of effort and, and uh, hassle. So uh, then I go into wave sailing and I realised having a wave sail is so much lighter and easier to manoeuvre. Also having a wave board with the inboard foot straps. Now a freestyle wave or anything like that will be good. Um, my top tips if you want to get into waves, do your research. Um, we've got a few things on the YouTube channel that shows you like intro to waves and the rules and stuff. Know the rules. Um, know what you're trying to trying to achieve. You know, go to the place. Ask the locals. That's the best tip. Like for example, here in Tenerife, right in the bay, it's not ideal to sail on high tide. Now, if you came here just as one off on holiday, you just look at it and go, yeah, that looks epic. Go out and actually have a really bad time. When we do our clinics here, like the best time to sail the bay, for example, is when the low tide and it's pushing. So I always try and do my clinics around then. It makes the beach much bigger, makes the waves not so steep. Um, and it's much easier to get through the waves. So just be careful on the conditions. Make sure you don't throw yourself into the deep end. You know, like, you know, first time in the waves, you don't want to go to Who Keeper and throw yourself off the rocks there and go, yeah, this looks easy. Um, that's a place that takes a lot of talent and a, a lot of, you know, having a look and searching and find out where the rips and stuff go. Everywhere you go, they do have strong rips. There could be rocks. Um, this is the stuff that you need to ask the local windsurfers. Also, one of the top tips that I'd always say if you go to a new venue with waves is just sit there for five, ten minutes. Go to the local shop, say hello to make sure that you know that you're there. Find out what's right, what's wrong, why is no one sailing there, and watch the good guys. You know, like, wow, that guy's doing loops and you can see him catching waves. And then you see another guy swimming and it's going, whoa, why is he down there? And that's what you need to check out and go, right, actually, the good guys are there. This is my plan, I'm going to sail there. Um, that's what I'd recommend and also you know like the clinics are really good we do a lot of intro to wave clinics that really help people um, that waves are not they don't have to be massive and scary like you know a lot of people I have a, uh, a guest at the moment and he really wants to get into freestyle and stuff and I'm like well what about wave sailing and he's like oh well, I'm not sure I don't want to die and I think the only wave sailing he's ever seen is Brazilio and Francisco and stuff and Levi at Jaws and thinking that's wave sailing doesn't have to be like that. Of course it can be, if you've got the balls enough in the skill, but just normal wave sailing can be anything from little waves to here to head high to their mast high. It's just choosing the right location and also getting some top tips. Um, yeah, so answer your question is freestyle wave or, or something with inboard foot straps and a non-cambered sail would be good. Okay, just make sure your kit is seaworthy and check all your ropes um, and then you're good to go. Uh, the secret for the forward loop, Matteo. Okay, um, secret for the forward loop, maybe we will do a forward loop clinic if this goes well. Uh, depends on the feedback from you guys, but I'll give you a few top tips. Now, look, there we go. Let's, let's just try grabbing a mask. Too so I need a mask. Okay, right. Think about a leverage. First things first for the forward is to remember what you're doing. Okay, now. If you look back in the day of the 80s and 90s, you saw people doing like killer end over end loops. Now, that's all good, but it's quite scary because you've got to literally go and try and rotate the full, the full four meters. Now, for me, most people don't go, yeah, I've tried a loop, I did it once, never again. That's not the way that we should loop. In theory, if you do the right sort of, you know, the right research and get it into your head, once you do your first loop, you land and go, shit, is that it? That's pretty easy. That's how it worked for me. Now, a few things to, to know is to do your research online. Again, I've got a great video. Okay, um, you're rotating like this. You're not going end over end. Uh, Mr. Prophet from Windsurfing TV explained really well when we did a clinic in Cape Town together. Think of a wheel. Okay, so you have the inside of the wheel and the outside of the wheel. Most people, when they loop, they think they're on the outside of the wheel. They jump and they go, woo, let's go. And they go, whoo, bang, like this. But actually, what happens with a forward is when we do a spin loop, where the kit spins around us and we're on the inside of the wheel. So when I jump, my body doesn't really, my hips go from there to there. That's a loop. I'm not going, woo, and trying to do a handstand. Now, this is the key thing for the loop. Um, also, wherever you, you take off your land. So if I take off up into wind and throw it there, I land into wind normally with no power. Now if I take off downwind and throw it there, 
I hope he will land in that position with power that will pull me out of the turn. Okay, so we've got the position to take off. Now again, we were talking about bottom half, top half. My bottom half, okay, with the forward loop, this is a good muscle memory. We had, earlier we had to shove it. Now with the forward, we're gonna do this. So it's my, what I call my hello sailor. Oh, hello sailor. Okay, and I'm lifting up my hips and showing you my, my ass. Okay, and what that's doing, is that's gonna kick the board off downwind. Okay, now the key where people go wrong with the loops, um, let's use this board for example. Now, if I'm sailing along towards you, hopefully you can see the board. Okay, and if I put the sail in line with the board or downwind of the nose of the board, I lose all the power of the sail. Okay, and this is a classic thing that people, they jump up and they go to the loop and they put the sail downwind and try and roll onto their back. That's when you're gonna hurt the eardrum. Okay, now the key with the forward, throughout the whole time when you do the loop, is you never overtake the nose of the board. So when I jump, I kick the nose off down there and the sail stays there. Now throughout the whole time when I'm looping, like I'm round, and my nose is always in front of the sail. As soon as the sail gets in line with the nose of the board or downwind, I lose all my power. Now last top tip, again, I'll probably do a clinic if this goes well and we get some feedback. Uh, last top, top tip for the forward is you gotta think about a leverage. Okay, imagine I'm trying to lever this board, okay, and I do it from there, okay, it's going to be quite hard, but if I use the whole length of the mast, it's going to be a lot easy to leverage the board up. Hopefully, stay with me, I'm onto something here. Okay, now, with the forward loop, we have a classic of people putting their back hands down the boom. Okay, so what happens when they move their back hand, is they do that. Now, putting your back hand down the boom is putting your back hand down the boom, ladies and gentlemen, okay, it's not this... Okay, now look, if I put my hand there and I go for a loop, I can't control all that power, so I end up doing this whole end over end thing. Now if you ever watch, you know, Brasilio, Ricardo, or Phil Costa when they're doing their loops, or Perre, their backhand is so far down the boom, it's near the adjustment of the boom, okay? So when they do do their loop, they can get themselves to the end of the kit, and also the leverage of all that power there, is going to throw me round. Okay, so backhand down the boom, I'd highly recommend. You can even mark yourself on your boom. Okay, normally for me, I know at the 140 mark, I'm gonna be flying around on my loops. Okay, cool. Um, next question, some tips to improve my bad side. My bad side, making manual, manual, manual. Is that, am I reading that right? Okay. Um, Anything to do, right, look. First things first, you've got to give yourself a pat on the back because windsurfing is one of the most technical sports in the world. Um, it's very frustrating, but very, it gives a lot back to you, you know. I've been doing it for years and it still blows my mind that I'm, I'm still finding challenges. And I know everybody at home gets very frustrated with windsurfing. You look like, ah, oh, why am I doing this? And then finally you do it, it's like, whoa, I did it. And that's what takes you to the next level. Um, now, the reason why it's really hard is because if we think about snowboarding or even surfing, let's think about surfing, we get up and we naturally go onto our, our, our left foot or our front foot, it depends if you're goofy or natural. Me and my left foot, that's the way I'd naturally surf. Now, with windsurfing, we don't have that option unless you sail switch. We've got to do everything both ways. Now, what you've got to remember, if you do it one way, you can do it the other way, okay? That's all in your head. So you've got to think about what helped you make the other way, and then you can do it the other way. Okay, sometimes I've learned moves on one tack, and I thought, oh yeah, this is really hard, and I finally got it. Now I went to do it on the other tack, it was actually easier. So there's a, um, so just try things. Look, I can remember Nick Baker told me once, he said, you can't claim a move until you can do it both ways. And then I spoke to him a couple of years ago, and said, Nick, you know, when I was about 10 years old, you told me this, and he was like, did I? Didn't really mean that. So I don't know really, <laughs> you know, most of the time when we learn freestyle, we learn everything both ways, but you've got to look at your beach, you know, your freestyle you want to come do on the shore, and then you're jumping on the way up. So it depends. But what I'd say is, you know you can do it one way, it's possible to do it the other way. Find out where you're going wrong, and correct it, because you can do it the other side. So yeah, it's just muscle memory and practice. You've got your foot, you know, you've got your tack in, you've got everything like that. Um, Thomas Harrison, how much is a wave coaching course with you guys at TWS? 
Well, first things first, I work alongside TWS. They're my, uh, my good buddies when I'm in Tenerife. Um, they have quite a few clinics kicking around all summer um, or all winter when they're allowed to open. My, me personally, I have my own coaching page, windsurfcoaching.com. Um, all the prices and stuff on there, but it could be anything from a private lesson. Normally the week is with us is about 400 euros for the week and we do from in the morning from when the centre opens all the way to the centre closes then a video debrief or then we go out in the evening for a few drinks and stuff so we're always entertaining and having lots of fun and that's the key remember windsurfing is fun don't get frustrated with it so many people I see ah I'm punching the cell it's like guys we're not forcing you to do this it's meant to be fun yeah fun okay do we have another question? We're loving the questions, keep them coming. It's good, it keeps me entertained. Um, Lucas, top tips in super choppy conditions. I explained this one earlier. Let's get down on it. Okay, see your knees are like a suspension strut. Now if I just stand there rigid, it's gonna be very vibrating. Okay, if I actually just relax, and it's a bit like, as I said before, drum and bass dancing, Spanish are good at this with salsa. Okay, and just allow your knees to absorb the chop, it's going to be a lot easier than getting out of these choppy conditions. If I stand like in that super seven straight solid, lock out my core, it's going to be like this. If I just bend my knees and relax and think I'm on dancing some drum and bass, it's all good. Okay, so just relax, let your body move. Okay, um, and try not to be too rigid. That's my top tips in choppy conditions. Also the angle where you dangle, coming up into wind. If you're hitting the chop dead on, you're going to take off. By coming up into wind, we'll slow it down and you'll be able to come up into wind and won't take off every bit of chop. But the most important thing is that bending your knees really helps. Cool. Um, so, we got any more questions? Or we, um, that's an hour and five minutes. I'll be very impressed if people are still listening. You're doing good. Okay, Christoph, Ella Malaka. Got some uh, Athens people tuning in. Um, Shane, we should be going to Sardinia in May, but looks like that's not going to happen. Um, but hopefully you're enjoying enjoying this time. What else we got? Ciao, Colin. How many windsurf boards should you properly should a proper wave sailor have? Oh, good question. Um, oh, I have two. I travel the world with two boards, um, and the size. So I'm about 87 kilos. Okay, 86, 87. I know there's going to be a few jokes there. I've actually haven't put on that much weight through the lockdown. But um, my perfect setup, okay, uh, the quads, these are literally my favourite boards I've ever sailed. I'm not saying that because I'm sponsored by Goya and sat here with the Goya t shirt. Game changer this year. They are so nice. This 89 has been my one, one board to go to. Oh, I just love it. It's absolutely amazing. Now, I travel with the 89. Okay, and they don't have one, but I have a 104. Um, and that's my quiver. Now my quiver sales, I have 3.7 up to a 5.0. Should have a 5.3 when I'm teaching, but personally when I'm traveling, I can like, you know, I use the 89 when it's windy, and if the wind drops, I can rig my 5.0 bonsai with so much power, I can get it going on the 104 when most people are going on um, 5.3s. So again, that's in my head thinking I'm light and really, uh, really really good and get going nice and early so yeah I have a two board quiver on my weight boards that's a 104 for the light wobble and ride that you get a lot of in Cape Town and an Ireland you know it's nice to have a bit of volume what I will say is you know back in the day if you talked about a 104 litre weight board for example you just go you're having a laugh yeah, that's pretty much impossible it's a slalom board but the boards have got so much better they got a lot shorter and fatter. Now, you know, you see the top guys on the PWA using the 94 litre boards, the, the 106 and the 104s and stuff, and all the way down to really small, apart from a few of the smaller guys like Traversa and stuff. But the bigger guys, they're always using, I think, Ricardo's favourite size boards, like a 95 litre, a 94. Um, I think he said online the other day. So, you know, it's um, the bigger boards are getting better and uh, they don't feel as big as they should. You know, they have very narrow tails, and that's the key to the quad. So they have this nice pin tail, and it just turns on a sixpence. Um, strap position into relation to fins. Whoa, that's a, a good one. Now, look, every board's a little bit different. That's all I'm going to say. Now, this is, you know, um, you've got to feel what's right for you. Now, for me, 
it all depends on the person. Now, you know, if people are first getting into wave boards and they're really struggling and sinking the tail and turning up into wind, I'd recommend moving their straps forward a bit, keeping that weight forward more towards the middle of the volume of the board. Now, for me personally, I like to have my weight on the tail. So it means that when I do my bottom turns, I can really stamp on the tail and it can turn on a sixpence. Now, it's a personal preference. It's got to be uh, comfy. Now, how wide, again, you know, it, it's a personal preference. It depends on you and how tall and how wide you are. Now, you don't want to be too wide, okay, and you don't want to be too narrow. You've got to be comfy. So sort of shoulder width apart, that's a good position for me. I go a little bit wider so I can transfer my weight from one foot to the other. So, you know, I can really get my weight forward if I'm doing my bottom turn, and then as I go, as I drop it in, as I go onto my, my sort of my pivot at the bottom, I then lean and put all my weight on the back of the board. So I like nice and wide. It's a personal preference, you've got to feel comfy. Right, hi Colin, any tips for learning to jump? How to take off, greetings from Cornwall. Bum Montus, BNE, Cornwall, the Cornish love. Um, any tips, right, for jumping, um, learning to jump. Now, if we talk about flat water, let's not talk about flat water, let's just talk about hitting a wave. Now, hitting a wave, it is pretty easy. You don't really have to do much, to be fair, you just have to hit it right. Um, if we look at the, the angle of attack, if we go up into wind, we kill all the power. If we go across the wind, we're comfy. If we go down one, we've got mega loads of power. So, there's a little bit of a tip. You want to kind of do your, your rocket air, I'd say, slightly into wind, and then you can bear away. Now, the key to jumping is what you do with your legs. Now, I'm just going to grab a chair here and just show you quickly. Now, most people, where they go wrong with jumping, is they try and tuck up with both their legs, okay? And they pull both their legs towards them, and what happens is as you land, you'll land pushing against the fin, and the board will spin out every time. Okay, how do we stop that? What we do is a scissor effect, and we extend our front leg like so. Okay, and we pull up with our back leg, and you can see what happens to my body position. It comes towards the back of the board, puts me in the perfect jumping position. Okay, now the beauty about this position is when I do this in the air, I naturally bear the board off the wind. Gives me power in the sail that will give me lift. We spoke about earlier, if it all goes wrong, oh, excuse me, if it all goes wrong when we're jumping, we just let go of the backhand, okay? But here, we wanna be unhooked, okay? And extending that front leg and pulling up with your back leg. Now also, here's a really good tip to jump in. If we have a look here, okay, I'm gonna jump. Is the camera ready for me to jump? Jump, jump, a little higher. Okay, so, if we have a look here, I'm gonna jump. Okay, and then that one. Which one looked bigger? Hopefully the second one. Now the difference is, my head height's exactly the same. Okay, from there to there, my head height didn't move. It's what I did with my legs. Now we're jumping, when people jump, they go, and they don't really jump. But if you jump and really extend that front leg, that will naturally put you in the perfect position for a rocket air jump. Okay, the angle of the wave will depend on which angle you attack. Okay, now if we talk about a manoeuvre, a forward loop, okay, when we do a forward or just a nice floaty jump, what we want to do is hit the ramp so it's not too steep, okay, so it throws us forward to either do a jump or to do a forward. Now, if we want to do a rocket air, okay, and just go up and land on the tail, we want to wave nearly breaking, okay, and that's going to throw us up to then come back down on the tail. Normally, you're not going to land that sort of manoeuvre planing, so you've got to be prepared when you come down on the tail. Now, if you want to do a back loop again, you're nearly looking for that wave nearly breaking so it throws you back so you come round, push loop the same. Okay, so choosing your ramp depending on what you want to do is very, very important. If we just quickly look at what goes on with the sail. Now, if you're up in the air, okay, and this is a classic when you do hooked in, okay, when you're up and you jump hooked in, you can't move the sail. So all that pressure is pushing through the mast foot and that's when we end up going sort of nose first. Now, in the air, if we end up with the tail down there and the board's like this, it means we've got the sail too much open. If we sheet in and extend our front arm, that'll put pressure through the mast foot and that'll flatten the board off. Now, if I keep sheeting in and keep pushing, okay, I end up coming down those first. So what I want to do is then to open up. It's that fine line of tuning. So when I jump, 
keep myself tucked in, pull the sail in, that will naturally give me lift. And when I land, what I want to do is open up and stand tall. So the sail depowers, brings me over the center of the board again, get my balance, check my hair, hook in, Woo, boom, plane in jump. Okay, wow, that's an hour and 15 minutes. Um, I think I need to go and uh, give you guys a break. Hopefully you enjoyed this. If you have, please let us know and we can do a little bit more of this. Um, massive thanks to uh, BJ Productions and Seven Pixels for uh, all their hard work for setting up the big lights and making you look really pale. Um, there, good job. Thank you very much TWS for letting me use your amazing place to come and do this. Thank you Goya for having me. Thank you Windsurf Coaching for letting me do my job. I love my work. And uh, good luck everybody, stay safe, stay at home. Hopefully we'll see you on the water one day soon-ish. Thank you very much. Woo!